welcome to the MBS Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silverquill. I will find the MacGuffin plant. Huzzah! Ooh, what's that glant? Glant? I don't know, I, I heard you say glant, so I was... Oh, plant! Sorry, plant! Ah, oh, plant, okay, yeah, the MacGuffin... Is it Groot? I am Groot! <laughs> uh, you and your video games, it's gonna rot your mind. Oh, believe, believe me, my mind is well past rotted. It is <laughs> decomposing at this point. Blarg. Uh, maybe we need to push you some more Overwatch stat. Oh, don't even get me started on an Overwatch. Uh, well, uh, I heard some intro's gonna be changing soon enough. Oh, trust me, later I'll tell you horror stories about working with, uh, doing the Uprising and, uh, Black Ops event. Oh god, that's gonna be fun. I can't wait. But anywho, this ain't no Pony Overwatch podcast, but it's just a regular Pony podcast. So in today's episode review, we are going to review My Little Pony Friendship is Magic issue 58. In this issue, Twilight Sparkle, Fluttershy, and Sakura follow the notes of Mage Meadowbrook, searching for a flower set to cure all ailment. So it's the miracle plant. Yay! Wow! So, anywho, before we start, let's head into first impressions. And Silver, what are yours? Well, this is an interesting follow-up because, in a weird way, it gives Mage Meadowbrook even more development than the rest of the pillars. And it also adds a note of tragedy to everything they've done. It's so sad. Why am I so sad? Because unrequited love. Ah. Yeah, it was sad. At the same time, it may not be the the best showing of Twilight Sparkle. Yeah, I, I'll get into it later. So you just sort you just sort of like uh, Twilight. You're usually better than this, and this is meant to take place directly after a health of information, which didn't present Twilight in the best light to begin with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so before um, I continue on, um. The comics from this point on are are trying to play off the TV series or the episodes. In all honesty, the way we should have recorded this one is um, a fell of information and then this comic, so it makes some more sense. But timing was not on our side, so we had to hold it off till here. So, yeah. Making sense? What fun is there in making sense? Yeah, true that. Got number three on Watch Mojo. <laughs> but anyway, are you done, Silver? I'm all done. All right. And as for me, this comic was fun. I do like the expanding of Mage Meadowbrooks here because uh, in the Legends of Magic comics, we didn't really get to know her that well. Uh, we got her own comic, which is the, okay, uh, she went to Zombie Town and cured everybody of zombie illness. And then uh, she got recruited. And then that's about it. Uh, even in the... TV uh, finale, we didn't really get to know her that well. And in this one here, at least we get some backstory of Major never sired children, and she's single. She did have a crush on this one stallion named uh, who's his name now? Aquavine? Yeah, Aquavine. So if she were still around, probably they, they those two would hook up. So yay, much fun. But other than that, I do like this comic. Um, I, I think I've babbled on about what I like and dislike, but I'm going to save it for the end. So anyway, if you guys at home have not read this yet, pause here and go read it. Welcome back. I hope you like the comic. Did, didn't that last part entertain you? It entertained me. Anywho, we start off with our heroes in Twilight's library looking for some... Back history to something. I think uh, Cattail comes into Twilight's castle and presents them with some kind of documentation by Meadowbrooks. Yes, indeed. Uh, they they found some letters regarding a very powerful plant. And they're just trying to find the location of it and whatnot. And yeah, Zakura's in this one too, by the way. Uh, we, we forgot to mention that Zakura is in this comic. So yay, yay. Wait, Zakura exists? Oh my god! I know, right? So, the scenario here is, uh, while looking through Major's book, they found letters. Uh, letters about, well, love notes, and also some uh, in-depth documentation about 
a flower called Magical Magenta Bloom. Is it right? I believe so. So, anywho, uh, said flower has the power or possibility to cure all illness from um, Twilight mentions it, and I don't remember, but it has the power to cure all illness. So, with that, Twilight is very excited to discover this because uh, she thinks that with this, she could have her name in the footnote of Equestria history. Which, kind of an odd thing to say, because is how you're already a national savior several times over, a princess of friendship. I don't know why you need to be in the medical history books, too. Overachiever? Overachiever is one thing. This is, I must be the next star swirl the bearded. <laughs> Funny you say that. She has a crush, or she, has, she admires the old coot, so why not, right? I don't know about admires the old coot, but she definitely idolizes him. And why not follow in the old man's footstep to get recognized and to get well-known that way? So the flower or the notes in Major's notes uh, said that the flowers could, can be found in Philadelphia. And with that, the whole gang goes on a road trip to Philly. Yay! Well, it doesn't say that the, the flowers in Philadelphia wouldn't be a quest if that were the case, but at least they can look up uh, one of Aquavine's descendants. Ah, yes, that too, that too. <laughs> See, I'm becoming like Twilight. Uh, <clears throat> but anywho, they go to the Hall of Records and they say that one of the descendants of Aquavine still lives in Philly because most of them have moved away. And when they reach to the greenhouse that the vines own, it's owned by... I forgot the name. What was the name? Uh... You know, this is probably the most frustrating aspect. They introduce a character, but I don't think they ever say her name. She's just... Even on the wiki, she's listed as Miss Vine. Miss Vine. Huh. Yeah, Miss Vine. Okay, yeah. I can dig it. <laughs> Miss Vine. Write it on. So, yeah, they all meet up at the greenhouse... Uh, they made up with Miss Vine, and Fluttershy gives um, Midge Meadowbrook's uh, love letters to Miss Vine and saying that, hey, this would be something interesting for you to find out because uh, it involves your great-great-great-grandpappy. Oh, Pepe. And then she shows a not-so-humble photo of her ancestor. I say that's, you know, how to put this. You, you know how some pictures are pose in a um, showing off way so I'm saying this is one of them you know just for publicity and whatnot. Well, I can certainly agree on the publicity aspect it's like hey ladies I've got lots of roses oh yeah 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 so anywho um, Twilight opens her mouth talking about uh, we are also looking for the magenta bloom and Miss Vine here says, oh, I know about that, and I know where it is. So why don't we start an expedition? And I think Twilight asks, if you know where it is, why didn't you go? And Miss Vine mentions that, oh, um, I would love to go, but nobody was around to take care of the shop. I have family to tend to and whatnot. So yeah, I, I don't have it. Luckily for you guys, it's blooming this week, so we can go get it. So why not? Yeah, I call my brother and take care of the shop. Woohoo! From there, I just sort of think, are you going to stay and keep an eye on us? But there's a super plant be blooming right now. Oh, my hip is cracking from sadness. <laughs> oh. Like, Jeez, mom. Why the... What? <laughs> when you mention plant, like, well, why does the rocky... Sorry, uh, why, why does the plant from... Um... What's this? Little Shop of Horrors? Yeah, Little Shop of Horrors. Why, why is it in my head right now? <laughs> Feed me. Oh. Feed me Seymour. <laughs> oh. Watching that movie as a kid screwed me up. Like, oh. But anyway, let's carry on. So, road trip on the road. And like I mentioned before, Twilight asks uh, Miss Vine about the whole flower and her theory and whatnot. And next final, they went off on their road trip. 
um, Twilight asking about the flowers and whatnot. And Miss Aqua here kind of wants to know more about Cattail because he seems to be the quiet one because she knows who Princess Twilight is. And Fluttershy is meek and quiet. Sakura strange, so she doesn't want to talk to her. So the only cult in the group is Cattail. So yeah, she, she wants to know more about Cattail. Why not, right? And they start talking about the legend of Mage Meadowbrooks and how she decontaminated a well. And this story is cool. In spite of the instructions of a bleeding idiot mayor. Yeah, idiot mayor says, no, that's not true. That couldn't be it. Like, the well has been there for centuries. Like, it's not polluted or whatever it is. You're an idiot. Oh, sure. Your sound's getting sick and I'm the idiot. You know what? This is kind of a short flashback. Like, it can all be fit in one page. Well, there you go. It's not necessarily meant to be uh, the whole story. And yet, in some ways, I found this a more more expressive uh, version of Mage's character than her own Legends of Magic, where she's basically battling zombies. She showed her physical prowess in that issue, but this one shows her more mental acuity and her will to, to help others despite uh, the shortcomings of, of those in charge. However, there's also a note of tragedy to it all. As Mage was developing feelings for this aqua vine, but then she was so focused on pursuing her goal, she never got to pursue that. And I think this is the first time they mentioned that the pillars, not yet named, mm -hmm. all mysteriously disappeared. Yep, yep. But I have to point out something because if not the people in the, what you call this, comments would. I think the only difference between the Legends of Magic, Meadowbrooks, and this version of Meadowbrooks is experience. In the Legends version of Meadowbrooks, she's an upstart uh, healer. She's fresh out of the gate. This one, she has experience. I'm not sure what the chronology is. I'm, I'm just saying because, like, I, you know what? That's my story. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> or sticky. Yeah. So, while they talk and banter about history, uh, they got lost in the woods. Oh, no. So, Fluttershy... Does what she must be the wife of the group because she's insisting they stop and ask for directions. <laughs> it's funny because sexist. But anywho, Fluttershy suggests that hey, why don't we ask the locals for direction? And say locals are a bunch of squirrels. And to the surprise of Miss Vine, she's surprised that she can talk to animals and also surprised at the way that Zakura talks. Yeah, that's the funniest part. Oh, yeah. Fluttershy is the strange one, Miss Rhymes, a lot. <laughs> oh. I will give your racism a pass, but just so you know, you can kiss my ass. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <clears throat> uh, so, anywho, after on the next page, they found the location of the flower. And said flower is dangling or growing on the cliff uh, top. No, what, what, what do you call it? Uh on the cliffside. Yes, thank you. The cliffside. And eager little twilight here uh, flies up and tries to get it. But, oh no, the sea salt kind of gets into her eye. And also the pollen, oh no, and the wind condition is not good. And so she falls down. And Miss Vine says, that's not the way to go it. We have to climb down. No, Pegasi can do it. So we need to do it the earth pony way. It's like apple jacks off of the distance. Ah! Told you so. <laughs> yep. And Fluttershy talks to Zakura about this. Like, yo, Zakura, you think Twilight's a bit fixated on this flower? I mean, she went up there without even thinking. Something's wrong with her, Zakura. Oh, well, she's been blinded by the promise of fame and fortune and accomplishments. Goodness knows Twilight always seems to really come down on herself to make an impact. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's why you could retire tomorrow and still be a, fa a famous figure in equestrian history. True. Uh, but still, uh, continuing on, they reach to the mountaintop. And Twan is so eager that she doesn't look both ways and falls down the cliff. And since the wind conditions are terrible, she can't fly right. With the salt from the sea and the pollen are in her eyes, she's going to fall. And not good. Ugh, tough times. 
But Th- Fluttershy, and this is rather stunning, Fluttershy can flap down the gales just enough to give Twilight a pocket in which to get back up. That's some serious wing power right there. Well, she can flap them hard enough, but she's not strong enough to maintain them. And all that lesson from Flight Camp, yeah, I'm glad that she remembers those kind of lessons. So yay. You mean Hurricane Fluttershy? Uh, did she do some, something similar to look like this? Well, that was where she had to help create a tornado to get the water to uh, from a reservoir into Cloudsdale to make clouds. It required a tremendous amount of wing power from every Pegasi in Ponyville, and Fluttershy was afraid she was the weak link. But she was just that en- enough power to help get it done. And it looks like she's gotten even stronger if she can push down these gale winds even for just a minute because these are enough to confound any Pegasus. So, Fluttershy is powerful. You will all kneel before the Fluttershy. All hail the Fluttershy. The Fluttershy. I'm assuming you all are kneeling. (laughs) Yes, yes. Except for that one guy, Thomas, start kneeling. (laughs) I'm just throwing that name out there, but can you imagine how all the Thomases in the world are feeling right now? (laughs) Oh, God. I, I'm just wondering, like, if a listener named Thomas is listening to this and he's thinking, what, Silverquill mentioning my name? <gasps> oh, oh, I must, I must do what he says. Silverquill's watching, always watching. Oh, no. But anywho, on to the next page. Twilight learns a lesson and says that she's a dum-dum for jumping the gun. And they all said that, hey, it's cool, it's cool. We have to work like this together, not like Meadowbrook solo. We we all are in this together, like that one high school musical song. Or the movie, which I guess has, hasn't happened to these ponies yet. <laughs> yeah. But we we got this. <laughs> we got this. Yep. Oh, boys. But anywho, um, until the next day, they have a plan. And the plan is for Twilight to jump down to the... A cliff side what but it, it's not a dumb move because they tie her to a rope and Fluttershy is going to do the flapping to calm the wind down a bit and Cattail is going to uh, tell where to go and with that it works the plan works Miss Vine and Zakura pull Twilight up and they got the flowers and Zakura and Twilight are excited about the possibilities of what could Happen now. Yay. And Miss Vine starts rhyming with Sakura, showing that she's not totally a racist. Yeah. I mean, I keep saying that, but really, Chancellor Nese is still a good ways off. Yeah, true that. Uh, but anywho, uh, on the way back, it seems that Miss Vine and Cattail are forming some kind of relation, you might say? I ship it. <laughs> yes, thank you, Claw. Uh, and with that, um, both of our ponies learn their lesson and episode ends, or comic ends. So, Silver, what do you think of said comic? Well, it's kind of funny. They are truly chasing a MacGuffin plant. This can, uh, this can enhance the fields of science. Hey, guess what? It doesn't do squat. Uh, I mean, it's kind of funny. We never truly see it do anything. Come on, plant. For all we know, the equestrian... Uh, horticultural society is just going to smoke it. <laughs> oh no! Oh god! Yes. No. God no! Yes, I went there. Oh no! And I'm not sorry. Oh you! Come on, it's fourth or glaucoma. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! But anywho, um, final thoughts, Silver. What do you think of sit comic? Oh, it's a fun one. It, it's hard. It's not a great Twilight story. I get the idea. She's so caught up in the idea. She's not really looking where she's going. She's not facing uh, the challenge in the moment. And you need the help from her friends. But this is Twilight just after a rather lackluster appearance in uh, Health of Information. And it's like, where was this determination when Sakura was, you know, at risk of becoming a mindless plant? (laughs) Ah, yeah. Awkward. Very awkward. But she still does a lot of good job. And she's beating herself up a little bit afterwards, but... Then Fluttershy, she gets to show her best Mm -hmm. uh, and help her friend. And that's good because these two don't have a lot of interactions in the show one-on-one. Even when they went on a map mission together, 
Twilight kind of ignored Fluttershy for a good chunk of time. I will say it it adds an element of tragedy to Mage Meadowbrook that, well, it establishes she disappeared along with the other pillars. But to find out that she never, she had a chance for love, but never followed through. There's a tragic uh, aspect there. And expect someone to start reading poetry at me. Oh, to the virgins to make much of time. Let's see here. How does that full poem go? Uh, not sure. I ain't no poets, so I, I, I really don't know. Robert Herrick. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. All time is still a-flyin'. And this same flower that smiles today, tomorrow will be dying. The glorious lamp of heaven, the sun, the higher he's a-getting. The sooner will his race be run, the nearer he is to setting. Oh, sorry, this is time. Yep, o, o to the virgins to make much of time, yes. That age is the best, which is the first, when young blood are warmer. But being spent the worst, and worst time still succeeds the former. Then be not coy, but use your time, and while you may go marry. For having lost but once your prime, you may forever tarry. So basically he's saying, we're all worm food. <laughs> don't let too much time pass by. Oh no. Don't let, don't let restraint hold you back from living. And that's what I think of when I hear the tale of Mage Meadowbrook and her uh, lost love. Although, without that, Cattail wouldn't be able to get his groove on. True, true. It would be awkward. Oh, no. But, yeah. So, um, what, what else do you think, So, Well, I just quoted a classic poetry at you for a My Little Pony comic book. I think I've stretched the <laughs> bounds of strangeness. All right, yeah. And as for me, Sorry. I like this comic. I, I like the way how... Most of the comics from this point on try to flip the uh, tables on the characters because in the episode we had Fluttershy being the panic manic one about the whole situation until she got sick herself. And in this one, it's Twilight's turn to be all crazy-like and super obsessive about the plant. And I just like how they switch it that way. It's, it's fun to see. But it's true... Um, in helping Twilight's case in the episode. So, yeah. And as per usual, Zakura didn't have much to do in this book. Sigh. Yep. Probably in the future. Other than that, I do like this book. Getting to know Mage a bit more is fun. And with that, uh, those are my thoughts. So, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, we are continuing sort of our post-season 7 fill-in-the-gaps by talking about issue number 59, in which Pinkie Pie takes upon herself to find the pie Rainbow Dash can stomach. Oh, wow. Uh, that's going to be an interesting one, because this one whew, is a woozy. But anywho, if you like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com with every support. You get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted contents, and a huge thank you from me. Uh, talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lurker, Cat, Starstream, Myself, Lag, Amy, Mark, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you guys so much. You have been really awesome. Uh, what about you, Silver? Any shoutouts to give out? Well, I'll give a shout out to anybody who's watched my YouTube videos, read my Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight comics on DeviantArt and my adventures with Clutterstep, and a shout out to Everfree Northwest, which I will be attending May 18th through the 24th. 20th, yes, in Seattle, Washington. Awesome, awesome. The Seattle-Tacoma area. Uh, this is BronyCon or Everfree Northwest? Everfree Northwest. Ah, yes. I wish I could go, but no money. Ah, sad. It's okay, Norman. There will be a time. Yeah, and then Sid Time says, Oh, I want to go to the States, but we don't have any pony conventions. Ooh, it will be just like visiting normally. No, oh, no, it will be so boring. <laughs> it's so boring. Oh, it's so sad. Yes, but still, if I do go, I get to visit a foreign country. So it's all good. So anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the Mia Show. See ya. Adios. So what are we going to do with that plant? It just keeps saying I am grouped. It's very confusing. I say smoke it. Smoke it? I can dig it. <laughs> Next thing you know, everyone's just lying in a circle playing the bongos. We are grouped. <laughs> oh, God.
Uh, and thus began the Groovy movie. <laughs> <laughs>